the um, synthetic up at your radar, short name the SAR, has a fantastic capability to detect the surface roughness at the ocean surface with very high spatial resolution. This allows us to uh, take out the contributor to the surface roughness, which is among those most dominating the surface wind. Wind at the ocean surface has two properties. It has the speed, the wind speed, uh, the strength, and it has a direction. And the synthetic aperture radar is in fact able to detect the directional properties of this uh, in, in one uh, image. Meaning that if the wind blows towards the radar antenna, it has a very strong uh, return signal. If the wind is blowing across the radar antenna or the radar loop direction, the, the sensitivity is much weaker. And this is both a, um, a, a valuable uh, knowledge for us, but at the same time it's a challenge for us. If we do not know anything about the background wind speed and direction, we may fool ourselves into the wrong estimate. Uh, now, if we are near land and we can use a little bit of the land in the image, then this helps a lot. We can more or less immediately now take out the wind direction because of the signal in the near shore part. Whereas in the open ocean, we need to maybe know a little bit about the large-scale weather conditions, then we have immediately an indication of the direction, the large-scale direction, and we know it. And we can go in and we can take out the radar cross-section and basically relate it to the wind speed. And up to now, we've been able to detect wind speed in the range from a few meters per second up all the way to about 30 meters per second, which is hurricane winds. And with great details, in terms of spatial resolution of, uh, let's say, hundreds of meters, we can say something about the fine dynamic, uh, dynamic uh, characteristics associated with low-pressure systems, which has not been possible to observe with general observing system because of its lack of, of resolution. Today, we see um, that the use of the uh, uh, SAR for detecting winds is a sort of a, 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 a byproduct. If we can remove the wind, from the ocean surface, then we are immediately in a better position to take out the rest of the roughness on the ocean surface and associate that with waves and with currents. And this is exactly what we do. Waves on the ocean surface has another characteristic wavelength. It is typically waves in the order of 100 meters, and they will be quite the the structure, so there's patterns of waves. As you've been in the ocean, you know that. And this pattern is immediately detected in the SAR image because of the fine spatial resolution. And we have very um, good um, ability to immediately claim that this is ocean surface waves, nothing else. So in that type of observations, we can characterize the wavelength, we can characterize the amplitude, and out of that, we can uh, estimate the uh, spectrum which is what is usually the drive in ocean wave modeling. You sort of simulate the wave spectrum and you predict the changes in the spectrum forward in time. So now we observe this with the SAR and we combine it with the wave models and altogether we have a better initial position to sort of give a more reliable forecast in the next uh, state of the ocean um, the surface roughness characteristics. So wave observations is... Um, then another quite distinct type of applications uh, of SAR data. Uh, and it has demonstrated its ability to be highly important for monitoring wave, waves in the ocean surface. And we see fascinating uh, uh, signals where waves in generated in the southern hemisphere by low pressure systems coming uh, into the southern ocean, travels all the way across the Pacific Ocean, across the equator, and reach the shores in Alaska in North Pacific. It takes them about 10, 15 days to do that travel, but we observe it with these SAR data. Absolutely a fascinating way to monitor waves on the ocean surface. Now, moving on then, we have been able to know the roughness associated with wind and associated with waves. We can also then, in a way, remove that contribution to the roughness um, uh, signal. And the remaining part now, shall be the surface current. This is a very delicate uh, situation where we are still uh, sort of uh, challenged by 
by all the details that can be uh, occurring in terms of the mixed contribution of wind waves and current. But the more we can be sure that we take out the wind and the wave contribution, the more we are confident that what we are left with are the surface current signals. Predominantly today, we can do this in two ways. Surface current boundaries are extremely important to monitor. It is along the surface current boundaries that all the vertical motions is most dominate. This is where things are being accumulated, or this is where things are being pushed down or coming up. So it has a rich relationship with biology. Boundaries of currents seen in SAR images is again manifested through uh, a very detailed and confined surface roughness anomalies. This is wave current interaction in a very gentle uh, play. But the SAR detects it, and we are confident that we uh, are able to also take it out of the SAR images. So we can align these fronts to be characteristic of the boundaries of the strong currents. Recently also, we have been able to do another thing, which is a direct retrieval of the surface velocity of the ocean surface. And that's taking into account the Doppler principle. In order to understand the Doppler principle, one has to be a little bit um, confident with the principle of the sun, because it is a measure of amplitude and phase. And if you were only measuring amplitude, you would not be able to do this. But thanks to the fact that it's also measuring the phase of the signals, we can look at phase shifts, and in the phase shifts, we are able to reconstruct the total motion of the surface. And now, if we again know the wind, the wind direction and the wind speed, we know the wave propagation direction. We can take out those contributors to the phase shift, and what we are left with is the phase shift induced by the surface, surface current. So this is shown now to be feasible with the SAR systems as well, and it is um, a very important additional new contribution to the ocean observations with SAR.